It's moments like these. You're all alone and absolutely exhausted. Miles from the track that leads to the road that leads to the car. And with darkness impending, you feel like you'd give anything to hit the reset button. To take it all back for the comfort of your home, a warm shower, safe walls and good food. But then you remember, you just found the most gold you've ever found in one day. And you did it in under two hours. But before we dive into this story, let's just set the record straight. This is not a story about success. This is a story about failure. You see, when I first started this channel in 2019, I had no idea how to find gold. I just thought it looked like the coolest thing you could possibly do, spending time out in the wilderness and coming home with treasure. So I tried and I failed. Then I tried harder and I failed. I tried a range of different techniques, almost everything. But the one thing I never did was give up. Time to go home. It's just this chaos out here. I'll give you guys a look at all the gold I found. Yep. That one piece. And yep, it is better than nothing. So with every new adventure, I gained more experience. And with more experience, I gained more stamina, pushing further and further outside my comfort zone. And bit by bit, I started seeing results. In the years to follow, my passion for discovery has taken me on a wild ride around the state as I've explored many of the remote streams that drain the west side of the island. I've sought out ghost towns, caves, and even made discoveries celebrated on national television. Okay, the Jane River in the heart of oh, southwest yeah. Tasmania's Wild Rivers National Park is one of the wettest and least accessible areas in Australia. Back in 1901, a 19-year-old logger, John Standard, drowned in the river and was buried in the wilderness. And in April this year, two prospectors set out to find his grave. And this is the top, That's the top half of, of Stannard's grave. They're the Hewans. They are the Hewans. <laughs> we did it! Yes! Oh my God! Oh, this is the happiest day of my life, brother. We have done it. We have done it, dude. But highs simply cannot exist without the lows. And this journey has seen its fair share of those. From being stranded by floods to being rescued by helicopter, I've documented and shared my experiences with you all. And I'm amazed to say that that number is now 20,000 of you all. So remember, take the ride, roll the dice. Get outside, make mistakes, learn and grow. Because the people who risk nothing, do nothing. Have nothing, and are, are nothing, nothing, and become nothing. They may avoid suffering and sorrow, but they simply cannot learn to feel and change and grow and love and live. Chained by their servitude, they are slaves. They have forfeited their freedom. Only the people who risk are truly free. Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm uh, out here in the middle of nowhere, sweating up an absolute storm, because I've got the seven mil wetty bottoms on. So I'm heading into a river, a very remote river, to do some gold prospecting for a couple of days. <clears throat> and it should be pretty interesting. I'd almost guarantee that this river has not been prospected in probably a hundred years. So I should have a busy couple of days. I've just got to um, navigate for the next maybe K and a half. So I better keep my eyes on the, uh, on the trail. It's 
too bloody dark in this creek. Pretty dark in here. And getting pretty deep. Slippery. Seriously, I know I say this way too often, but this is probably one of the most beautiful streams I've ever seen. Like, this is just 100% ancient Tasmania. In all its glory, beautiful. After an arduous journey, I'd finally arrived at the river. The time now being mid-afternoon, I decided to head upstream to see if I could find any bedrock that might be worth working. Little did I know that the next two days was going to reshape what I thought was possible for prospecting for gold in Tasmania. One of which being a multi-ounce day. So I've just spotted those crevices over there that seemed to run into the middle of the river. Might be time to put the bag down. Now I don't want to get too ahead of myself <clears throat> because it could be a fizzer, but these look absolutely textbook they're like steps and they're on the inside bend of the river so any gold that's coming down the stream will travel over this bank and across these steps if there's a crack in the joint of these steps guaranteed there'll be gold Yep, there's gold here.
Well, what a friggin' afternoon. I finished up now for the day, it's like 6.30. I've probably got an hour before dark. But <clears throat> I managed to work all of that, all of those, and then all the ones along the back. And I'll show you what I got. That's a pretty stonking pan. Gotta be at least 20 grams in there. And this thing, I don't know about this, could be three. Should be three. Don't know. Ripper piece though. <clears throat> and a ripper day. So this here is gonna be camp for the night. Not the prettiest sight, but good enough to rest my head for one night. So I've just come up here on the little bank to try to find some more dry kindling. And as you can see, by that square cutout, I'm not the only one who uh, has found gold in this spot. That cutout would have been from the old timers, probably a hundred years ago. They would have found gold in the exact same spot I did, over on the steps, which is just a perfect natural trap. And uh, yeah, they would have been digging a shaft down, seeing if there's gold in the gravels. Because as this river cuts its way over to the other side, it leaves its history behind. That's how inside bends work. That's how rivers meander as they get older. One side is carving into the, a wall and one side is leaving behind deposits. And this is a deposit. Looks like they gave up on it, unless it's just been filled in. I mean, 100 years. Would have taken them a long, long time to get down to bedrock. Well, what a freaking incredible outcome for day one. It really doesn't get much better than that. Arriving at the river, smashing the gold all afternoon, and <clears throat> having a convenient camp right next to the gold spot. Pretty epic. Oh, good morning guys. I had the biggest sleep ever then. I woke up at like quarter to six, ready to wake up. But it was pretty dark. And uh, yeah, I had another little nap that lasted two hours and here we are. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll get up soon and have brekkie. 
I actually bought my metal detector too, so I'm probably going to scan like all of this bedrock here where I worked yesterday and see what's up in the banks. And then the plan will be pack up camp. I'll take a day pack up the river, maybe for like a K or so max. See if I can find someone worth working. And if I don't, I'll come back down and then find somewhere back downstream. Because I overlooked like a fair bit of ground on my way up here yesterday. And yeah, I feel like there's gonna be more ground to work below here than above due to the gorges and stuff that I spotted. Definitely not the driest wood, but she'll burn if you got a bit of, a bit of fire going. After a fruitless scan of the bedrock, I had a quick pan in the top reaches of the crevices I had worked the day before, which gave some good chunky results, but it was soon time for me to depart the steps and find another spot to work. Off we go to begin our day's work. What's in store? Who bloody knows? Hopefully more gold. Some of these cracks here might be good. So upstream sucked. I found a few small pieces, but nothing like the chunky ironstone coated pieces I was getting downstream. So I collected my gear and pursued my course downwards. And it didn't take long before I found somewhere worth poking about. Now keep an eye on the big quartz mass in the middle of the screen. It's amazing how much gold can be hiding inside areas like this.
that awesome nugget well that there was certainly an unexpected surprise I never would have thought that this smooth bedrock here would have that type of chunky gold in the right spot so I spent a lot of the time working on the right and it wasn't until I went over to the left that I found gold and it makes sense. Look at all the heavies over there. No heavies over here. Got to use my head more. So I made it back to the Magic Creek where I'll be exiting from. But I've still got an hour or so before I really need to leave. So I'll go for a look downstream, I reckon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is why you need to make sure every minute counts. I had given myself a time limit of 60 of them before I had to leave, which you can imagine was never going to be the case when I saw what kind of gold was laying about this deposit. It was literally old pickers and chunky flakes just sitting there in coarse gutters requiring little to no work to get to. It was like nature had done all the work sluicing and classifying the material and all I had to do was see how much of it I could fit inside my snuffer bottle before I had to leave to make it home before dark.
Holy moly, I cannot believe that. That was the craziest amount of gold I've ever seen in my life. And it was just consistent, like any little crack or hole had heaps of chunky gold. And it was all just one after another. It was, it was just like somebody come over on a helicopter and dropped like a kilo of gold on that spot. I can't believe it. I'm just, I'm in shock from that. But, um, I've got to go. I've got to get out of here. I, I overstayed it by an hour because I was like, screw it, I'll walk out with the torch if I have to, which could be the case. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to clean this up. And while I'm at it, have a look at how it went. Um, I know it was friggin' insane. I definitely got over an ounce. Gotta be super careful not to lose any of this gold. Nah, I'm losing it. I'm gonna lose gold. I'm just, I'll do a reveal. Oh my God. Holy shit. Holy air. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That was just in like the afternoon. Oh my goodness. I oh that's That's gotta be at least at least two ounces. At least two ounces. Have you ever seen anything like that in your life? Oh, I, I'm seriously, I'm, I, I feel like I'm about to faint. It's just, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed, but I've got to get out of here. I need to, I need to pack up and go. My lens is fogging up. I've got to go. Okay guys, so I'm back home now after that insane trip and I've got all the gold cleaned up and we're going to take a good look at it. It has been a while since I went and did that trip. And I'll get to the reason for that in just a minute. But for now, let's have a look at some of the shiny and weigh some of the bigger nuggets. So this here is all the beautiful gold that I got on day one from the steps. Notable pieces being that big chunker. And some of these ones here were quite special as well. All in all, nice chunky gold. So we'll pop some of them on the scales. We'll start with this little one here. Pretty much a gram. So this one here is gonna come in under, way under, only a half grammer. So maybe this one here isn't actually three and a half like I thought it might have been. Nah, 2.17. Way under what I thought that would be, but still an amazing piece and one of my only two gram nuggets to date. Okay, and then the big haul, the day two haul. Now most of this gold came right at the end of the day from that spot that I worked flat out for two hours. And uh, man, there were some insane pieces. Actually, these two bigger bits came a little upstream but yeah, most of this stuff here was all just sitting in that open gutter like crevices and I was just snuffing it up like a vacuum. So we'll go ahead and throw this one here on that I wrangled out of the little crack with the micro crevice. So one, one and a half grams, pretty good. And then this wicked piece here it's got some amazing character, real clean. And 
and that's 2.32 so that's actually the biggest piece of the trip now here's where things get interesting when I was cleaning all this gold up as I do I tried very hard to remove any impurities and what ended up happening was I removed a lot of other stuff which I thought there was no way that that was gold because it was so dark. And as it turned out, I had this stuff stored away and one of my mates, Craig, who's an electrician who's helping with the renovations, I showed him a couple of pieces and he said, I don't know, I don't think that is ironstone, mate. That kind of looks like really dark gold. And uh, he ran a circuit through it and it came back holding charge and he recommended that I get some Alibright from uh, Super Cheap Auto. He said you can put ironstone coated gold in Alibright and it will take the, the ironstone off it. So I did. And uh, this little piece right here, I'll show you the before picture and the weight of it. And I left it in the solution overnight and yep, sure enough, came back gold. So, so all of this stuff here that I removed is gold. Doesn't look like it, especially, you know, these type of pieces, but it is, which is insane. So I'm gonna keep all of this stuff as it is. I, I don't need to do any more testing on it. I know that it is gold and I've actually never seen gold like this before. And I've got a little stash of it. So I'm going to name it Phantom Gold. I think it's really cool, super unique. I've worked a lot of rivers and I've never seen anything quite like that stuff. So I'm going to be preserving that as is. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty. We want to know weights. Okay, let's start off with day one and see how we did. Since a lot of these pieces here were smaller than I thought at the river. I'm probably not around the 20 gram mark. It might be under, but we'll see. 14.5. So a bit under half an ounce, not tea bags. Now the fun one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two tubs on, tear them, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put all the stuff that I knew was gold. I'm ready for this. Sixty-four point nine four grams. That's over two ounces. And then we'll throw the phantom gold in. Oh, that was lucky it landed in there. 81.06. So obviously this was a really massive haul. Um, super stoked with it. And I'm gonna be sending every single one of my Patreons uh, some of this gold next week. So if you're in my Patreon, keep your eyes open for a post that I do there that will be requesting uh, addresses which you'll be able to DM me on Patreon so I can send out uh, a little vial of um, some of this gold. Depending on which tier you're on will depend on how much gold you get. But that, I just want to say thank you to all of my Patreons who've supported me. And I did mention that this video took a little while to come out. Now the reason being the weather hasn't really been that great and it's taken me some time to actually get back into the river. And I wanted to make sure that I did a real number on it before I started putting these videos out. So stay tuned for that because if you thought this haul was massive, the next time is even bigger. So this is day one.